All right, tonight's games on Gets a Palooza are brought to you with the kind consideration and help of the Labyrinth Games in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gets a Palooza. We are here today to have a Bushido game. Haven't had one of these in a long time. Since I'm running a tournament in a month, I, th I thought I'd better play a little bit. Um, so my uh, my friend Justin and I will be uh, matching wits and models against one another. Um, I'll show you the armies in a bit. I am horribly outnumbered by his um, cult. So we're going to see how this is going to go. So uh, I've got the board set up. This is actually perf of concept. Uh, my idea was that I took aerial photographs of each board and then I would pack up all the terrain for each board in its own individual box. So when it came to setting up, I could actually have somebody else do it. I'd print the picture out and throw it in with the terrain and then they could just set everything up the way they wanted. And Justin and I set up the board using basically that same method and uh, it worked out pretty good. That's a pretty close approximation to what it was. We actually moved a couple of things around uh, on purpose, so I'll have to re-photograph this particular board. But uh, anyway, so here we are. We've got we're going to be playing Ryoto. So it is a four-inch area of control markers um, scored on two, four, and six with resets on three and five. Um, got nice little conifer forest, which of course there are plenty of in Japan. And then here's our little kind of sacred area with the core in the background and a Tory gate in front. So uh, I like the board, it's pretty, um, it's simple. You may get a little scatter terrain on it for the tournament, but uh, I, unfortunately I didn't bring the scatter terrain with me. So um, it's gonna stay the way it is for today. So we'll see how it plays. I'll be back in just a minute with a review of the armies. Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at the armies that are on the table today. First of all, my Tengu, which you're all very familiar with, and I'm sure you're sick to death of looking at these figures. Uh, I do have some new armies, and I will get to painting them shortly. But right now, getting ready for Adepticon is kind of my priority. Uh, I will be watch running the Wind Watchers theme as usual. Um, it has a couple of nice little perks uh, when I lose a model or when I kill a model with a higher rice value. But by and large, um, that extra two inch movement, that, that third thing at the bottom there, it's just really useful. I, I like it. It enhances a natural strength that my army has. So um, that's why I, I go with Wind Watchers most of the time. Uh, leading my army is Hokibo. He is the big dog. Um, big, scary, very expensive, um, but well worth the trouble. Next is Hakzabo. My crane, there he is. Let's get him in focus. Again, <laughs> filming against a white background is not too friendly. Um, very versatile, I like him. He's got armor piercing, not many of my models do. Um, he doesn't fly, but he does have leap. So he's still pretty mobile and I can spend key to activate him for a third time in a given turn, which is very handy. Riohobo, who is my go-to Shisai, does healing and passes around key. Terrific model. Uh, Chirobo, uh, again, very versatile. He's not particularly strong in archery or in combat, but he has a lot of neat little tricks that he can do. And if I need a Vim, he's, he's the guy almost always. Some, sometimes it's Hakzabo just to shake things up, but Chirobo makes a very good Vim. And then last but not least, uh, my little Spearman, Zen Kibo, who has only six points, but is very good for those six points. He's, you know, not fancy, but he has lots of handy little traits. He's got Precision Strike, which is armor piercing, and push attack, and he's got armor dodge, fly, and first strike. So a little bit of everything. Let's um, see what Justin has for his Cult of Uriye. Okay, here we are looking at Justin's Cult of Urie army. So I'm going to hand it over to Justin and let us let him walk us through it. Go ahead, sir. All right. 
So I'm running the Death and Decay theme list. Gives me an extra Kirai for with a rice cost of five or less for free. Um, during the starting phase, I get to choose one of my friendly Kirai and it gains poison. I have to start at a game uh, once terrain has been placed, but before deployment, I get to throw in a fog bank. And the traits or restrictions on it are as I can take Gonk, Kirai, uh, Bakuman, and uh, Swarms. So when, when All right. I'm, where do you want to start? Uh, we'll start from the left, go to the right. All right. All right, so to roll it off, I'm going to run Chinchiro. He's my light-footed assassin. So he'll be able to sneak around a little bit, maybe kind of give me an advantage. Maybe they won't see him coming. Uh, to the right of him, I'm going to be running Kato, Puppet Master. Um, I just like this model. I'm uh, not the best with them, but I just kind of like the whole idea of them. I'm walking around and picking up souls, collecting them, and then making them into just mindless zombies. Um, I'm going to be running two couple enchantments. Uh, one of them is going to be preordained. At the start of the game, I get to roll two dice, and then I get to keep one of the results to use at a later time to replace any dice roll. I have to announce it before I actually take the rolls, so... I'll save it for those key hits. Uh, Otai's, Otai's coin's gonna let me re-roll ones on Kato for uh, any type of uh, tests, which is pretty decent. Um, if we start up on the top left, I'm running a Kirai Militia, and the theme gives me an extra free one, so I'm gonna be running two of them. And if you look to the right there, I got uh, two Risen. Uh, these guys are coming in to kind of beef up my numbers. Might help me out, might slow me down, but uh, these guys are always fun to play. So I have, a, I have a blast with them. And last but not least, I'm gonna be running Gonk, Corpse Collector. He's gonna be running around trying to suck up models so that uh, I can bring them over to my deviously undead army. So that's what I'll be running and we'll see how the game goes. All right. Thank you, boy. I'm outnumbered. This is gonna make uh, it's gonna make this tough. All right, we'll see you in a bit after deployment. Welcome back. Here we are at the end of deployment, and let's see how everybody is disposed. Um, Justin had a fog bank that he could uh, put out, and so he put it on his nearest area of control objective, so that he gets some cover for the, as long as the fog bank lasts. Otherwise, he's just all lined up here and ready to go. Gok is in the middle. The uh, Puppet Master, who is my least favorite model of the entire line that I have faced anyway, is uh, closest to the inside so he can start messing with my guys. And uh, the Kiri are all lined up, just looking to grab onto objectives, take advantage of their numbers. He does have one model um, that has advanced deployment. And that model is right there. That's his little ninja, undead ninja assassin guy. So, and my, my cord for my microphone is getting hung up on everything. Okay, uh, what did I do? I, being horribly outnumbered, uh, kind of positioned myself to make a grab for these two center objectives and avoid Gok and company for as long as possible. So, there is uh, the three, my healer on the left, and then my little fighter and my big fighter. And then over here I have Hakzabo, and he's kind of on his own because he can't be targeted by a friendly model. So in other words, I can't heal him, I can't move key to or from him. So he's just kind of out on his own. Um, and then there is Tarobo, my guy, with advanced deployment or with scout, so he's kind of moved up and uh, looking to make a play and maybe get an early arrow shot in. So that's where we are right now. Let's get the camera focused one last time on the table. We will see you at the end of turn one. However, let's do our roll on camera. Justin, let's... So this is for uh, first turn. And the eyes have it. So I will be moving first.
Here we are at the end of turn two. As you can see, both more armies have moved forward aggressively and are almost entirely on the objectives, one or the other. Uh, the Tengu move forward. Uh, Riohobo is sitting on their one point objective, uh, close enough to maybe cast some healing spells or whatever, uh, or easily hopping forward. Um, so the uh, my big two guys up here, probably my two best fighters, are in front because they are either fearless in the case of Hox, or um, they're brave. Hoxabo is brave, and Hokibo, the big guy with the samurai sword, is actually uh, fearless. So they're in front, ready to meet the advance of the undead. The archer and my spearmen, who are not fearless, are kind of hiding in the back for support positions. And of course, Ryohobo is there to be able to cast spells or heal or whatever he needs to do. And then if you look at Gok leading the forces of the undead as he scoffs at the offerings of sake and the shrine, they mean nothing to him. He's undead, he doesn't care. With a horde of zombies coming up the back and of course there's the puppet master in the background. And then sneaking around the sign right over here, we've got an assassin trying to get a quick shot at somebody. So anyway, that's how things stand at the end of turn one. As you can see, there uh, hasn't been any combat or anything yet, but we are definitely positioned for a fracas starting in turn two. We'll see you then. All right, here's our roll to see who has the initiative in turn two. Uh, looks like the Tengu do again. I'll take it. I'm interrupting our regularly scheduled, you don't get to see what happens in the turn, um, because something really entertaining, at least for me, just happened. So uh, Hokibo jumped over and attacked Gok, and uh, he pulled lots of shenanigans, including doing critical strike attack. I, I hit him uh, on the zero, won the tiebreaker, so I did actually get a roll which uh, meant that I got a chance to take him out with a critical strike attack, and I rolled double ones for damage. And uh, even though that results in functionally no damage, uh, it kills him. So somehow he died outright without actually getting hurt. Maybe I just scared him. It came so close that he had to flee. But uh, anyway, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll see you at the end of the turn. Hi there. Here we are back at the end of turn two. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, of course, I, I had to do the interruption earlier, so you know that Gok got cheesed out by my big fighter uh, by rolling double ones for his damage after hitting on the zero, which is just too funny. Um, but as things uh, worked out, the Kiriai are coming on strong. They are not intimidating in the least. Uh, one of them actually went into combat with Hoxabo, or uh, Hokibo, sorry, Hokibo. And uh, he got, um, died, I did six damage to him, but he made his rise test, so it's prone, so technically not in base to base at the moment, but um, certainly not afraid of anything, as you would expect from zombies. Over in the corner, let's see in the back, uh, this, fight continued on. This this was the actual first combat of the game and uh, the first one ended up in the draw with the uh, assassin from the cult backing up and then Ho Hokibo kind of, um, or Zenkibo, sorry I'm getting my names mixed up, it's been a while. Zenkibo kind of chased him down and did two points of damage to him but there that's far from resolved. So in the end this is how things look. I backed up um, so I could uh, make sure that I had this objective, so that's worth one point. I have this objective, so that's worth two, giving me a total of three. And 
the Puppet Master has got that rearward objective. So right now, the score is not five to one. The score is, I wish it was five to one, is three to one. Uh, and we will reset at the end of this turn and start afresh. We will see you after the next turn. Here we are for the uh, roll for turn three. Oh, the Tengu went again. All right, we'll see you guys in a bit. Here we are at the end of turn three. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time at the store, so I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get through turn four, maybe not. Anyway, the scrum continues. Um, there's been some wounds dished out on both sides, but really nothing tragic has happened to anybody. I've killed multiple Kyrie, uh, the Kyrie. They keep getting up. It, it's, it's an exercise in total futility. Uh, Hokibo has just been slashing things and killing them and hoxabo has been slashing them and killing them. Actually, the only one who killed something that stuck is Zenkibo finally got rid of the uh, the assassin. But other than that, it's just been zombies, you know, getting parts lopped off and then standing right back up again. So um, as of this turn, as far as scenario points, the, uh, the zombies get one. The cult gets one for having their own objective. I still own this objective. Um, so I'm still the only one with models on it, actually. I managed to clog it up pretty good. So I get two scenario points for that and one scenario point for that. And uh, that's where we stand at the end of turn three. All right, here we are at the end of turn four. This will be the last turn. Um, the, the kind of slow, steady bashing went on. I did finally manage to actually kill a zombie after knocking about six of them down and having every one of them get up. But the uh, defense of the middle platform by the Tengu was strong and they retained control. So at the end of turn four, uh, I get two scenario points for that, one scenario point back there, and Justin um, actually bailed on his one to try to, to take out Hoxabo, and that it just didn't work. So, so I will get the um, I'll get the victory point, the second victory point. So that'll be two points to none at the moment, and uh, that's enough to secure a victory, even if if um, Justin comes back and and wins in the final round. So. Uh, Justin, we, we had talked about this. The the kind of insta-gibbing of Gok was just a, a murderous thing. It uh, was. It kind of hit me, like, right in the beginning. It, I had an idea going into it exactly how I was going to play it, but then as soon as he was gone, it was, I had to come up with something, so just plug in the middle hole was the best thing that I could have done. And, and he should have been fine. I mean, I mean fine. that was it, that was the most unbelievable run of dumb luck. My yeah. wife will laugh at this when she luck, sees it, but, but it, it was definitely beneficial, and uh, it really makes me start thinking that maybe I'm too codependent on Doc. I mean, he's he's still a strong character, and by no means should you have ever been able to do that. But right. Yeah. Well, I, I just thought it was funny that you know. I hit him on the zero, yep. and legitimately hit him on the zero, but I hit him on the zero, and then I rolled double ones for my damage, so I didn't touch him, nope. but somehow Gok had decided that was enough, that, was. That, that the big scary bird was enough. It was. So, so there we go. Justin, thank you for a fun game. It was thank great. You, sir. Handshake, sir. Yep. That was fun, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted okay. out. But, but for a first game back, after you and I being gone for a couple of months, oh, yeah. that, that, it was okay. I'm, I'm not worrying about the, you know, the results. Um, you certainly did damage. It's just, uh, you know, when, when you lose your 
13 point character right off the bat. It's kind of, it, it, it's, it, it's it, the hardest it, it, a little bit. It does, and it's really hard to recover. So, anyway, now you guys can see, uh, you know, this is, uh, how did the table play? How did you feel about it? I like the table, I like the setup. Um, aesthetically, it's very pleasing to look at with the trees. It kind of gives that dark, kind of deep forest. Right. And this is kind of the birds coming in to like defend their territory and then the zombies coming up. Like it all, yeah. the whole mix match I thought was like really good. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. it. And I love your models, they're beautiful. And I always enjoy playing with you. And I, I thought I'd, I haven't shown people what this looks like from your perspective. So from the other side of the table, this is what it looks like. So still plenty of cover, lots of area to move around. Um, it was actually kind of nice to have the tango on the side with the big clumps of trees because it was a little easier for me to get around them. And uh, Justin's army slow enough as it is. So, mm -hmm. But still, fun. I think it worked. All right, guys. We will see you later. And thanks again for joining me on Gitsapalooza.